to the Landscape Photography Show. We're uh, really excited tonight to have a special guest, Ray Billcliffe, and I say tonight loosely because it's 3.30 in the morning for Ray, but he still is a trooper and gets on and hangs out with us and, and talks with us. Um, we've got the kind of the show title we have is Moody Moments, and Ray's going to talk to us about uh, shooting when the weather is poor, uh, to create a sense of mood and things like that. So we're really excited for that. Uh, my name is Kevin Rowe. I live in South Jordan, Utah, and I just love uh, getting up in the mountains and taking photos. I work with the landscape photography uh, community and the landscape photography theme page on Google+. And uh, Tom, introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Tom Rowe. I live in Carmel, California. I enjoy photo doing photography along the Central Coastline, Big Sur area, as well as this, I get up in the mountains in the Sierras. And uh, thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Tom. And Jim. Hi, I'm Jim Worthman uh, out of Phoenix, Arizona, and uh, love landscape photography, especially in the desert southwest. Um, also, I participate in the landscape photography theme and community. Awesome. Thanks. So first thing what we're going to do is get into the uh, show starters. So these are photos that uh, everyone has submitted to our show page and uh, tried to get them within this theme of the moody moments. And uh, these are the ones that we've selected. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get my screen shared. And... Okay, so this was my selection, and this is John Stria, and uh, just really liked the uh, use of, you know, whether it's fog or a cloud or whatever that is, but uh, really made for uh, a great feel to the to the photo. You still had some great color in there with the autumn leaves, and uh, I think that cloud really added to it, or the fog or whatever it is. So that was my selection. Beautiful. And Jim. Yeah, this is uh, by Andrei Konstantinov, and uh, I, I loved the light here. Uh, you know, moody sky, uh, kind of dark, but the, I, I like the contrast between the, the dark and the blues, and then that golden light coming down with the rays. Just gorgeous. Awesome. Yeah, it's beautiful. And Tom. I picked this shot by Fernando da Silva, Silva and um, this is a long exposure, I think slightly over two minutes, and I really like the soft water as it pours off the, uh, the I guess a concrete pier or whatever it is there. I like the sharpness of the, the chain railing, and I also like the lighting, or the rocks that are just offshore, that really gives some depth to it, so um, this is a, and the fact that he did it all in black and processed it in black and white, I, I think looks very good in black and white, so this is my show starter. Yeah, wonderful. And Ray, this was your choice. Yeah, this is a great shot um, at solid gray sky. This is very much what I'm getting in England right now and I've been for the past few weeks. Um, I love the way he's got this white wave breaking over on the left-hand side and the way that the, uh, the white and the green uh, contrast with that dark gray sky makes a beautiful, beautiful picture. That's a real moody moment shot for me. An excellent shot. Yeah, she did well on that one. Lovely. Great. Okay, and then uh, Jim, I'm just going to turn that over to you. I scrub my screen share here. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to give a brief introduction to to Ray. Uh, those of you who are regular uh, audience members will will remember seeing Ray a couple times in the past. It's great to have him on. He's full of energy. Um, Ray's uh, just a, a popular all-around nature photographer, and you'll see him in a number of themes on Google+, uh, notably the magic of light um, and other popular themes. And he also can be found on his website that you'll see down in his lower third. Um, we'll have links to a lot of Ray's material in the show notes also. Um, and uh, I guess with that, let's hand it over to Ray and he's going to talk about moody moments. Go ahead, Ray. Yeah, moody moments. When you have a winter like we're getting in England, 
Uh, Moody moments is about all we're getting. Um, seeing that I'm talking to people all over the world right now, I guess it's a good morning, a good afternoon, and a good evening to everybody. Can you all see this red picture up on the screen? No, we're still on your face. Okay, well, you we're like going to have to try to get this picture up. <laughs> <laughs> Let me try this again. And I was just going to add, my favorite thing about about Ray is just how excited he is about uh, photography. Okay, Ray, we're seeing your thumbnails. So if you want to start that over again. You know what? We just had the same problem just a minute ago. Let me, let me just sort this out. I'll be right with you in a second. Yeah, we're fine. No worries. And Ray, Ray uh, does quite a few themes here on Google+, Plus, so make sure you go and check out his page for that. Did you see this red picture now? Okay, we're good now, Ray. Okay. Moody Moments is all about a picture like this one. This was a, a sunset that I went out to shoot. Uh, it didn't look like it was going to be very spectacular. It was a really dark, stormy sky. Uh, the sun is about half an hour from uh, setting here uh, over on the left hand side and then the sky just within a few moments started to break up and this was the picture I got that's a, a, a cornfield or a barley field uh, that I'm looking across the countryside there and this sky lasted just a few minutes and then it was all gone and cleared and the, and the clouds just sort of evaporated so this is what it's all about when you're shooting in bad light uh, being out in the weather when it's not too good and uh, the first thing you obviously have to do is to protect your camera. Um, Amazon sells some pretty cheap, cheap uh, little plastic covers like a plastic polythene bag. You pull over your camera and keeps the rain off. Um, I always have one or two uh, in my bag and one in my pocket. You see the shot from the beach now? I switched. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Okay, when, you, when the sky is bad and the light is bad, it's great to get down on the beach and uh, shoot some of the waves. Uh, this is a shot uh, at one quarter of a second, which just slows down the water enough to uh, see the motion without smoothing it out too much. Uh, as you see, the sky is very dark, um, but it's starting to break up uh, on the horizon as the uh, the sun would be would start to set. Actually, this is looking east, so sun would be setting behind me. Um, when the when the light is really bad and you don't have a lot that you can shoot, it it it's good to slow your camera down a little bit and do some uh, long exposures. As I say, this is a shot at one quarter of a second. Had I done this at, say, five seconds, um, you wouldn't have seen the splashes up in the air, but you would have seen a really smooth uh, water, like a murky around the, uh, the rocks. So it's a, it's a great time for um, slowing your camera down and, you know, just calming it down and starting to see things that you don't normally see. This is a similar shot on a similar kind of day. It's a very dark, overcast day. And what I've done is uh, used a little exposure compensation, uh, boosted it up to uh, plus two, and then uh, got the exposure off the white waves, and that really darkened down the sky, so it looks like it was shot at night time. It's not quite night time, but it, uh, it was a very dark, gray day. <clears throat> uh, timing's quite important. Um, this is a shot at, uh, well, you, I'm not quite sure what the, uh, give me a second, just check you what the speed for this was. Oh, this is uh, ISO 200, F9.5, one two thousandth of a second. Um, it was a very, very stormy day. It's actually on the island of Tenerife when I was on vacation last year. Uh, we had two or three days of really, really stormy kind of weather. <clears throat> now, Ray, I have a question on this one. Yeah. Did you 
Do you uh, get your camera um, into a fast mode and take several photos to get the wave, or are you just relying on your good timing and taking one picture? Uh, I mean, it should have priority, and um, no, hold on, I tell a lie. Give me a second to bring this ISO uh, stuff up again. Yeah, this is in shutter priority. The ISO is 200, and it's one two thousandth of a second. Mm. Um, I don't remember intentionally setting it for one two thousandth of a second, so I guess I'm just shooting and hoping for the best. <laughs> um, of course, looking at the live view screen, once you take a shot and you look at the screen, you, it tells you it's all right. If there would have been anything wrong with it, I would have made some adjustments. Um, but I shot quite a few, and... Um, the key to this picture was, was the uh, exposure compensation at minus two. Uh, really darkened down the already very dark gray sky, and, and as you see, it made it almost black. Started to darken the white waves down a little bit, but not too much. Had this actually been shot at the correct exposure, taken off the waves, a lot of that water would have been uh, uh, washed out. It would have just been pure white. So. On dark, gloomy days, um, exposure compensation is uh, is quite important, especially if you're shooting waves, uh, because the water is obviously white and the, the sky is going to be dark, and you can't bracket your shots when you're shooting waves. This is another shot on my favorite beach. This beach is just down the road from me. It takes me about two minutes to walk down there. Um, this is a tide is on its way out here, leaving all this exposed sand, and it'll go a little bit further. Uh, actually, it goes about two football fields further out, and it's all rocks, beautiful. But look at this sky; does not look like an atomic bomb exploded up there. Mm. But this is what moody moments are all about. It's about the clouds getting the the sky, and the rest of the picture is not that important. I mean, these people on the beach. Uh, walking about in the houses. They make up the picture, but it's all about the clouds and the sky. This is what this picture was shot for. <clears throat> I'm just checking the exit data again, and this is 1 800th of a second at f5.6. My eyes is up at 200. Ray, I, love, you... I love the little dots of light in the, in the along the, the buildings and um, and then the way the light comes toward you on the beach, that, the light's gorgeous. Yeah, the, 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 uh, this is a shot that's actually um, looking south. So off to my right will be the sun would be setting, and it's probably late afternoon, maybe an hour or so before the sun is going down, uh, which is a time I like to be walking on the beach. The, the, the light gets really low. Uh, now, I have a couple of shots to show you later on where sometimes it comes through the houses and gives beams of light. And I've got a nice picture to show later on about that. Hey, Ray, since, since the clouds are so much the focal point in a shot like this, do you do anything in post processing to try to enhance it or bring out some more detail? Any tricks there? Um, well, every shot I do goes through Photoshop, so I usually use a darkened brush and burn little bits of the shadow um, just to sort of emphasize the whiteness of the cloud and try to get that fluffiness. And uh, I like the sponge tool uh, on the sand. It brightens that sand up really, really nice. Uh, but nothing too, uh, too drastic. Uh, just generally saturated. Saturation is boosted up a little bit um, just to bring out the, the fluffiness of the clouds. But of course, the clouds, and if you took away that fluffy clouds, this would just be a pretty boring picture. Um, the clouds make it. Right. Yeah. Mm. Do you see the red sky? Sure do. Okay. Um, again, moody moments is all about the sky. The sun here is um, an hour or so away from setting. It's been a very, very stormy, wet, rainy day, and as often happens, as the sun starts to go down, the clouds start to break up, and we get the light coming through. 
Um, that's what this picture is all about. It's the, the drama of the sky, the, the, the dramatic clouds and the, the sun streaming through. I uh, just wish there'd been some more sunbeams, and that would have made it even more spectacular. I haven't paid a lot of attention to the grass at the front, um, it's blurry, but the emphasis of this whole picture is about the sky. Um, gorgeous. It doesn't, this doesn't happen very often, so if you're not out there when it does, then obviously you're going to miss it. Um, I'm, I was about to say, lucky, I guess I'm not lucky, I'm retired now. <laughs> uh, so I'd look in, this, in the time that I can go out and take pictures uh, any time I like. I know for most of you, you have to go to work, so you can only shoot in the evenings or weekends uh, or when you've got time. But I urge you all to get out there when the, the weather's bad. The, the local weather forecast on the Weather Channel is, uh, I know we used to be laugh about the weather being was a joke, but they're pretty good now. If they say the clouds are going to break up and it stops raining at 5 o'clock, you can bet your life it will. <laughs> so you should listen to the local weather forecast if it's on a stormy, wet day <clears throat> and find out when the, uh, the sky is going to break up and go on out and, uh, and hope for the best. It doesn't always happen, but sometimes it does. Ah, well, you can see what this picture is all about. A really wet, miserable day on the beach. <laughs> Nobody out there but me and the gentleman out there walking his dog. Uh, the rain is streaming down. The important thing about uh, shooting in the rain is uh, make sure your camera is protected. Uh, rain and technology doesn't go together. <laughs> um, I've got a very cheap plastic cover with a drawstring on that fastens over the lens cover. <clears throat> You can play with all the buttons through the polythene. It's uh, it's not a problem. What do you do about rain hitting the front of the lens? Well, I try to angle it away from it. I have a lens hood on, and it's not that deep. It's probably about an inch or so. If I turned the camera and pointed a little out to see, it would get covered the uh, covered in rain. Okay. So I try to keep it. Sideways to the rain, as you see in this picture, the rain is coming off the sea, or trying to shoot away from the uh, from the thing. But I have a cloth uh, in my hand, um, and I'm forever wiping the lens. It's just one of those things you have to do. You've got to uh, be prepared, and uh, you know if you just get one or two shots out of fifty you take, then uh, that's that's what it's all about. I'm getting my feet wet in this picture. The water is actually round right about my ankles. Uh, it's very, very cold. Uh, I always seem to have wet feet when I'm on the beach. But you know, it's a, it's a great time to be out there. Um, there's not many people around. There's some walking on the beach there and a couple on the little promenade. Um, but then, you know, that's, that's not a bad picture. It's the kind of picture that most people don't get. Uh, and I like being out there in the bad weather. As long as you're protected, you're covered up, and the camera's protected, then there's no reason not to be out there. That's dedication. Hey, hey Ray, we do have a couple of questions that yes, uh, posted, um, and they're, they're kind of related. So let me, let me tell you both questions and see what you think. Uh, John Pavlis asks, is there an optimal f-stop setting to get the best sun? And then, on a related note, how do you avoid sun to be the white bright spot in the picture? And that's by Julie Barlasov. Well, I think we can all relate to avoiding the the bright white spot in the picture. What what would you suggest? Um. Both those questions have the same answer, and the answer is I have no idea. <laughs> I'll tell you why I say that. If you point your camera where the sun is at, you're going to get a white spot. Um, the sun has no features. It is a pure white spot in the sky. It has no highlights. There's no shadows around it. It is pure white, so you can't expect anything else. You can... Uh, 
have your uh, exposure on your camera on on the multi setting rather than on the spot setting and you will get an, an ambient uh, exposure for the entire frame mm -hmm. but you will still get a white sun <clears throat> this picture that's up on the screen now you can have the ruin of the old uh, ancient ruin abbey here you can still see the white parts of the sky are pure white because there is no detail there. There wasn't any detail when I shot the picture. <clears throat> so, uh, if I can add... Best, oh, go ahead, Ray. It's always best to underexpose your picture rather than overexpose it. You can bring some details back um, from the dark areas where you cannot get it from the white areas. Mm -hmm. So, I was just going to add that, you know, Typically, you have to have something to break up the sun. If it's just a big round sun that you're pointing at, it <coughs> look like a big white spot. But if you, like uh, Ray's previous pictures, you know, there's clouds that are, that are breaking up the sun. The sun was peeking through, and that's where you get sunbeams. And as far as an f-stop, if you, if you stop that down to a high f-stop number, 18, 22, something like that, then you'll get more of those sun rays, we call them sun stars, but you, you kind of have to have something uh, kind of to block the full brightness of the sun, a cloud or a mountain, something where the sun's just kind of peeking through a little bit. Yeah, yeah just don't, don't point the camera at the sun. Um, right. Try to keep the camera angled away and keep the sun over on the left or the right, or low down or high up, but nowhere near the center. That also has the advantage if you're pointing kind of at 90 degrees to the sun where it's off to the left or to the right, you get some nice cross light, um, you know, assuming it's not just overcast, and it'll help bring out details in the, in the subject. Yeah, you're right there, Jim. It's, uh, it's also at 90 degrees you could have uh, uh, one of those filters on your lens that you twiddle, what do you call them? Polarizer. Polarizer. Polarizer, yeah. I've got one of those on my lens all the time. I keep forgetting what it's called, and <laughs> often I forget it's there, but uh, that's what it's for. Yeah. It's to darken down areas, but it only works at 90 degrees to the sun. Um, shooting old abbeys and churches and uh, or any kind of architecture uh, is great against the stormy sky. <coughs> This is um, uh, Ruined Abbey. It dates back to the, oh, I think it's about AD 900 or something. It goes way, way back. No idea what it's called. You'll have to excuse me. I'm losing my voice again. Uh-oh. <laughs> this happened the last time. Hold on. <clears throat> okay, back on my favorite beach. Look at that stormy, stormy sky just starting to break down where the sun is going to set. It's about 30 minutes before the sun will drop down and come out through those clouds, and then it would be a white spot. Um, I was patient and waiting and waiting for this picture until I got this nice wave came rushing in and uh, spread right across the bottom of the, uh, the screen there. Um, Hard to tell what's the best point of this picture. Um, you know that sky has uh, got no detail in it, but it's a great color, and it emphasizes the whiteness of the water. A little bit of a sunbeam starting to come through in the uh, in the distance there. Um, I did take some pictures when the sun popped down, but it got too bright and it, it sort of washed out um, the buildings in the distance there. <clears throat> this is the end of a very, very stormy, wet, miserable day. And as you can see, no one on the beach. This was just a few weeks ago. Uh, this is summertime in England. Uh, you know, there should be people sitting on the beach having fun, but not in the weather we've been having. Mm. Uh, another evening shot, a uh, group of uh, people training on the beach. Uh, being another wet, miserable day. Starting to break up again. Tide is on its way out. Um, another dark sky. 
but the sun is breaking through. The sun is actually shining on this grass, which is right in front of me. You can see how it's bringing out the highlights and the colors. That's not Photoshop, did that. that. That is the light. I've emphasized it a little bit with a sponge tool. Um, but the overall brightness of this as a picture is great because you have the black sky and the light is the ambient light coming from the sun, which is broken through uh, the clouds over my head. Great composition for a picture, this wooden uh, jetty rail thing, like uh, what it did, it supposedly stops the sand dunes from uh, disappearing. Um, lovely seagrass. Uh, great shot, I love that picture. Uh, yes, we have a storm that's disappeared onto the horizon, got the rain coming down on the seagrass. This is in uh, Naples, southwest Florida, where I used to live. When I came back to England, this is Naples Beach. Um, this beautiful sea grass it stands about six feet high. And uh, again, this is all about the drama of the sky. And the color of this picture is actually just about the color it was. Um, that that yellow orangey color cast was there in the sky at the time, um, and I didn't take it out because I thought I kind of liked it. I could have took it out and made this into a more bluish kind of picture, cooler picture, uh, but I kind of like that one. Yeah, I like the awesome. gold storm. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a pantography picture that you can see that I've uh, played around with the pixels and twisted and bent them a little bit. <clears throat> but this is the similar shot I was telling you earlier on when I shot on the beach and the sun comes down and sort of makes these beams between the houses. And uh, it makes for a great shot, but it doesn't happen very often, probably maybe once or twice a year. And as I'm down there most days, uh, when it does happen, I do get it. And uh, the, the light bouncing off the water, uh, I'm just going to check the exit data and tell you if I use compensation on this. I don't think I did. Uh, this is f5.6, 1 eight hundredth of a second of ISO 200, uh, no exposure bias, so uh, it's a exp shot exposed for the brightest part of the picture, which is the water, and then uh, just left as it, uh, as it is. But look at the light, isn't that beautiful? And it's yeah. only like that because the sky above my head is just so dark, uh, the sky is almost black. It's the end of another stormy day. Sun is setting and it's breaking through the clouds and creating this gorgeous light. I love the light. I'm always trying to make it uh, better than it actually is, but it, it doesn't always work out. Uh, this is a little higher up the beach from me, a couple of miles. Uh, I have to drive up there on the sand dunes. <clears throat> and you can see the way I've lit this, the, the, the grass at the front here. I've had to use the flash. It was so dark. Uh, the sun is just on the horizon, uh, probably actually on the, the sand dune horizon, probably about 15 minutes from actually dropping out of sight. But it was so dark, I had to use a flash to light up the, uh, the grass. Um, but what a beautiful uh, red, bright, orangey sun uh, set and... Uh, only in the distance. As you look on the right hand side, you've got this black cloud. That is the entire sky is that black color. It's only over in the west where the sun is breaking through that we have the glow and the, and the yellow light shining through there. But sand dunes uh, are beautiful at sunset. Um, I should get there more often. It's not a place I actually go to shoot, so I, I might just go and do some more of it. <laughs> That dark sky really makes for a nice contrast. It does. This is uh, the lighthouse. It's just, again, just up the road from me. Five-minute walk, and I, I'm there. Um, this is one of those silvery, stormy days. Um, the wind is blowing quite hard. The, the sea is fairly rough, not too rough, but fairly rough. And the, uh, the sun is coming down through the clouds and giving us some sunbeams. Um, not a very good picture composition wise having the lighthouse dead center but I put it there because I wanted these sunbeams over on the right um, 
to be coming through. And I also wanted the two ships over here to give a little bit of balance to the rest of the picture. But again, this is all about the clouds and the light coming through and the, <clears throat> the moodiness of the picture. Now, Ray, I disagree with you. I think that's a perfect composition. It's some, you know, that you still have, uh, if you're looking at rule of thirds, you still have uh, more, you know, two-thirds of your sky, and, you know, it's okay to have that centered. So I like it. You know, it sometimes it works out, and uh, it's not always a good idea to put the uh, main subject in the center. But, yeah, on a picture like this, it does work out because... Uh, we have some interesting things on both sides of it. And, uh, yeah, no, no, this is a, a similar shot to that one, but a wider, a wider view. I switched from my uh, 50 millimeter lens to my 10 mm. uh, and took in the whole list. I wanted to get all of the sky. The, the clouds were really dramatic. So this is the entire bay. As you can see, the two ships are there and the uh, this is a 10 millimeter view. Uh, very, very fluffy skies. Really, it's silvery blue. It's uh, there's not not much orange in it, and uh, it was very, very beautiful. Very, very dramatic. And uh, on days like that, I, sometimes I just put the camera down and I just sit and look at the clouds drift across the sky, and uh, just take occasional shot every now and again. I'm lucky to have that lighthouse in the rocks. This is one of the most beautiful coastlines in the world, is uh, this northeast of England. Hmm. Here we are again on my favorite beach. Um, again, another stormy, wet, miserable day. As you see, the people walking, the dogs have got their overcoats on, raincoats. Uh, rain has stopped. Sun is starting to break through the clouds in the sky. Um, and we got the beams coming down and that makes for a beautiful, beautiful picture. But what I was trying to get when I took this was the reflection in the center from the dome. Um, that's the second largest domed roof in the United Kingdom is that one there and it's a deserted building that's not used for anything. Mm. You know, they're trying to think of something to use it for but they haven't figured it out yet. Um, got this lovely orangey color on the sand as the light is coming through. Um, Actually, it's a nice picture on a stormy day when there's not too many people on the beach. If this had been Saturday afternoon and the sun was shining, there would be a thousand people on that beach. Great, I love it when it's just like that. Nobody there. <laughs> but that's what moody moments are all about. That frozen moment in time can never be repeated. Those beams will come down maybe tomorrow or the next day, but they won't be just like that, and they won't be shining on that gentleman or lady with the uh, the Labrador right there in the middle. And this dog over here, this is great. When I lived in Florida, dogs weren't allowed on the beach. Yeah, we have dogs on the beach and our owners are quite good. They do pick up the droppings and clean up after them. They're, they're very good at it. Nice picture. I like that one here. Um, this was a picture that I took, obviously took it in color and then made it into black and white. Moody moments are really, really good in black and white. But best to be take the color picture and then change it to black and white later. Again, the end of a stormy day. This is on Naples Beach in southwest Florida. And uh, the only two people on the beach was myself and this little anhinga you see just on, sitting on the pile, on the wooden pile in there, and the waves are uh, coming in. But what I was trying to get here was the shadows, um, trying to get the, the reflection of the uh, the wooden poles uh, shining down there through the, the, the wet sand. Um, gorgeous sky. It was after, this is a very nice picture in colour as well. I didn't change it because it was bad. Sometimes the colour picture is not too good. and They come out nice when they are black and white. But another really moody moment uh, being enjoyed by that bird on the pylon and uh, myself taking the picture. Nobody else on the entire beach. Rain had just stopped and in southwest Florida when it rains, boy, does it rain. Uh, this is a 
slowed the uh, shutter speed down here. I think this is about one quarter of a second. Just check my exit data. Uh, F13, two seconds. ISO 100, F13 for two seconds. Smoothing down the water a little bit. And this is a foggy kind of day, very misty out there over the sea. And uh, dark, like a, a, a dark gray. So these these rocks at the front are a granite. They are a black, uh, like a cobalt granite. And, uh, these are steel posts that are sticking up in the, uh, in the water from some old pier or whatever it was. Uh, we the overall green blue uh, gives it a really magical kind of uh, effect. Yeah, that's nice that you were able to hold detail in the rocks too. That really adds to it. Yeah, these little uh, shades and uh, chippings off the off the stone. Sort of rugged. This is like it is a, a granite of some kind. Uh, very solid. It's forming a breakwater behind uh, where I'm standing is uh, sand dune. Um, so that's to protect the uh, protect the dunes, and the lighthouse that you saw in the earlier picture is just off to the right hand side here, just just off screen, off the picture. Ray, what's your thought process when you think about processing in black and white or leave it in color? Do you, you try both, see which one you like the best, or I I always do. I all, if I don't the color's not too bad, I will try change it to black and white. But I always give it a try in black and white. Uh, I've never shot a picture in black and white. They had the camera setting on black and white. Sure. But I do change a lot of pictures. Uh, when I process a picture like this one on the screen, I will do a, uh, an A and a B and a C, and then I will look at them later on and see which one I like best. Mm. Um, you know, make it a bit lighter, a bit darker. Um, you know, you, you can do so much in post-processing um, it's, it's it's good to take your time doing it and then try a few different options and see which one looks the best. Yeah, so Ray, uh, with regard to post-processing, th that was a great lead-in. We have a question from John Pavlis, and he asks, are your best moody moments directly out of the camera or with post-processing? No, I'd like to say they were straight out of the camera, but I'm not that good. Um, <laughs> Every picture I do gets something done to it in Photoshop, um, some kind of enhancement, boost the saturation, strengthen the shadows, brighten the lights, uh, blur the background, you know. Um, there's always something can be done. This picture you see on the screen with the wave and the rain, um, I believe when I had this for post-processing, I faded a little bit in the distance here to uh, sort of get get it to look a little bit more misty, although it was quite a misty day, but I lightened the picture because it was very dark. Um, but again, this is a perfect moody moment. It's not very often the waves come in uh, this far up the beach and break uh, against the, the steps there. Um, and it's chucking it down the rain, really pouring down. And I'm absolutely like a drowned rat. I'm standing over here, huddled against the wall, and the waves are washing up around my knees. Uh, it's actually quite precarious because these rocks are slippy. I wasn't in any danger of being washed away, but I was in the danger of falling down and uh, getting the camera wet. Uh, so it's got to be careful. Uh, it's very easy to slip on these stones and... Uh, your camera gets in the water and that's the end of your camera. Mm. Moody moments, I love moody moments. I love to be out there in that kind of weather. Nobody else around. This is the same day. It's pointed the camera in a different direction so you can see how rough this, uh, the sea is. The wind is howling. Uh, this is probably a 40 to 50 mile an hour wind coming in off the North Sea. Icy cold. Um, miserable, really miserable day. Nobody outside whatsoever. Just me and my camera. And uh, if anybody saw me, they'd say, "Look at that fool." <laughs> that, so, that diagonal you know, rain really makes a great shot. You, yeah. you come and get that shot on a nice, bright, sunny uh, summer afternoon. Right. It's not happening, you know. 
A lot of energy there. Yeah. Uh, it's a... So there's there's another question from Joel yeah. Bramley, and uh, you had mentioned you use a circular polarizer almost all the time. Um, he's asking, do you also use anything like a neutral density or grad ND filter? Yeah, I've got a picture coming up short, shortly that, uh, that I used the ND filter. Uh, I have two ND filters, a number four and a number nine. Uh, I'm mostly I use the nine um, in the daytime, you know, to bring the light down and slow everything down. And the number four is usually on at the dawn or in the, in the evening when the ambient light is low anyway. Mm. Um, yeah, the, on days like this, um, when, when the weather's really bad, um, yeah, you're already getting wet. It, it, sometimes it's nice to put the ND filter on and just try to smooth this water out because you get some great effects. Uh, you can't make this waves like that smooth, but you can certainly soften them and make them look uh, quite interesting. Uh, my circular polarizer is on the camera right now. It's, it's there all the time. It protects the lens. And I say, I keep forgetting it's there. Uh, when I do remember, and I use shooting in the rock pools down on the beach, it really does work in bringing out the colours in the water. So, um, I'll get a circular polarizer and put it on the lens. And uh, if you go, on, if you don't have an ND filter or a circular polarizer, buy the best one you can afford. Um, don't buy a one that's cheap because they don't really do a good job. And I believe my Circular polarizer was about seventy, eighty dollars. So it's not cheap, but it's uh, it's really good, and it, and it does a good job. Much more peaceful from that shot. And this is the same beach. <laughs> yeah, so it's a lot different. Uh, very, very bright. The sun is coming down, um, shining under the water. There, you can see, you can see the clouds are breaking up. It's turning into a very nice evening. Still, people got their coats on because it's the, it's still fairly cold. Do you know if we get temperature on a weekend of 60 to 70 degrees, everybody's on the beach in swimming trunks. Uh, I know in Florida, at 70 degrees, they're still wearing their overcoats. <laughs> Depends on what you're used to. Um, I love to be down there on the beach at this time of the day. Sun is starting to go down, and uh, usually at the end of a stormy day. The sky will start to break up. It doesn't always happen, but but it's nice to be there when it does. My favourite beach. Now here's a dra dramatic kind of shot. This is a little bit higher up on the rocks. The lighthouse is uh, just over on my uh, uh, on the the left hand side of this picture, so you can see an idea of where you are. And uh, these big chunks of uh, rocks are looking uh, nice in the, uh, the sun. Sun is down behind the uh, the cliff over here. It's actually further down, and it looks like it's not right just just at the low. It's way way down, and uh, shining up quite brightly. Um, a little bit of HDR uh, work done on this one. Uh, not a great fan of HDR, but sometimes it, on a picture like this with rocks and that, it does look quite nice. Yeah, I was going to ask because you have such nice detail on the, the rocks that are with the sun on the other side. Yeah, that's that's the HDR uh, uh, Photomatics. I have Photomatics Pro. I don't use it very often, uh, and I think this was was a, a bracketed shot, three three shots. Um, I don't really, I don't quite remember, but I think it was. This is a shot for, uh, looking up the coast from. Uh, Actually, it's looking south from where I live. Uh, the, the lighthouse right here is not the lighthouse you saw before. This is the mouth of the river, Tyne, where the boats come in and out every day. And there's that white spot that you were asking about. There is no way you can get rid of that because there is no detail there. It's always going to be white. Now, you can always clone a little bit of this from over here and move it but it wouldn't be the same. Um, that's just the way it is. It's a very bright white sky, and it's going to stay white. And there it is, right back in the middle of the screen where I told you not to put it, so we'll forget about it. 
Mm. Here's a black and white picture that was in colour and wasn't too good. Uh, if actually, it looked really bad in, uh, in colour. But this beautiful in black and white, this guy is sort of in a hurry. The foam is washing up on the, uh, the shore here. The, 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 the sea is extremely rough and the wind is blowing like you wouldn't believe. And it's really cold. Um, so black and white makes a, dr a drama uh, scene like this become even more dramatic and of course this is a pantography so uh, you can see the twisty bits up in the sky up here where I've uh, used the pixel twisters on it and uh, yeah black and white is nice uh, to get that dr dramatic effect black and white works good mm-hmm mm -hmm. Uh, Southwest Florida, uh, the end of a stormy day. This patch over on the left here, this is the rain still coming down. Um, but look at that, the sun has gone, the sun is that little white spot there, set, and uh, it's right on the horizon, and it looks like these clouds are coming away from the sun. It's very, very dramatic. The kind of scene that happens once, a year maybe or twice a year and if you're not there you're not going to see it and this cloud formation would only last for one two minutes at the most and then it would be gone uh, so you've got to be ready for it and uh, make what a dramatic picture pretty very pleased with that one very very pleased and as i said within a couple of minutes that that was all gone of this this is storm is moving across the sky very very quickly uh, this rain comes in Florida. The rain comes down really, really hard, but only lasts a few minutes, and then it moves on, and uh, the sun comes back out again. Similar shot on a uh, similar beach in Southwest Florida. These little people are sitting there, um, and the sky is just starting to break up from uh, a terrific storm. Uh, look at this black sky over on the left. I haven't darkened that. That's just the way it was. And then the, the sun is breaking through and the, and the clouds are melting away. Leaves for a nice, uh, a nice beautiful ambient, ambient light there. Takes a little while to get used to this picture. Um, this is a shot in Tenerife when I was on holiday. Uh, this is one of the Canary Islands. And... Uh, Again, the, the, the stormy sky is uh, starting to break up. The picture I took early, I show you earlier with the black sky and the white stormy waves was the same uh, day as this. And this is where the clouds are just starting to melt away. And uh, I'm quite high up. I'm probably at about 5,000 feet up on the mountain here. Uh, Mount Thierry, it's a big volcano uh, shooting out uh, over the valley. And look at these layers of cloud as they start rising. The heat is rising up off the land. All gone within a few minutes. Mm. That picture was not there. If you didn't get that shot within a minute of me taking this one, you didn't get it. Gorgeous picture. Really is. The storm clouds seem to follow you around. <laughs> yeah, which is funny because I like to be out in them. Yeah, <laughs> I think I want to go on vacation with you. I was just thinking I didn't want to go on vacation with him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I don't go to uh, Tenerife as one of the Canary Islands. It's a holiday paradise for uh, for Europeans. Uh, it's very tropical or subtropical. Uh, but I don't go for the beach. I don't go for the sunshine. I go hoping it's going to rain. And it has the highest mountain in, uh, in Europe. It's a volcano at 14,000 feet. And it's almost always in cloud. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I, I like to be up there taking the pictures. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Here we are on my uh, favorite beach again. The tide has gone out, leaving all the rocks exposed. Uh, this is a shot that's just before the sun comes up. Dawn, the sun will be coming up just over on the left-hand side here. And... Uh, what got me excited about this picture was that the way the dark sky over here, but the light was shining on this beautiful sandstone. And you got these swirls and curves in the stone itself. And the light was just catching on the edges and uh, 
Oh, it's quite dramatic. But I say I, I live on this beautiful beach, and it's always different. Every day the light is different as the clouds change, and the sun pops through or doesn't pop through. And um, great place to be with your camera. So if you ever come on a vacation, you want to come to Northeast England to some really miserable weather. Come and come and have a vacation with me. <coughs> Again, on my own beach, uh, looking straight out to, to, to sea, we've got a stormy, grey day. Uh, emphasis on the three little ships out there. As you can see, I focused on them, and uh, this is an F-22 shot, so I've got the waves at the front with some detail in the, detail in the ships way, way out there as well. Um, I like this because of the bands. You've got the line of the wave at the front, and then the line of this wave, and then the line of the rise, and then you've got the line of the clouds and the lines in the sky. It's all about the lines. Yeah. Nice moody moment in that picture. Love the textures. Yeah, the waves do that. Is mm. yeah. let me give you the exit data for the shutter speed because the. I've not figured out what is the best shutter speed for shooting water because it always changes. Waves come in at different speeds. Uh, this is one four hundredth of a second, f5.6 and uh, ISO 160. Um, we have another question, Ray. Uh, what's your preferred lens? Do you have one? Uh, my favorite lens is my uh, 1650. I have an F Sony F2.8 1650, mm -hmm. um, which is what this lens is. This picture is taken with that same lens. Um, I also like my uh, Sigma 1020, although it does tend to give a bit of barrel distortion. Uh, you know, if you're shooting trees, they will lean in at the sides. The 1650 is a is an awesome lens. You can just shoot just about everything with it. You can get right up close, and you can shoot uh, panoramas. Yeah, it's kind of related to that. Do you have a preferred focal length? Um, F11 is my favorite stop. Uh, I shoot most pictures that I do with F11. Yeah, uh, that seems to be the, the the best point for my particular camera. I have a Sony A77, um, but the 1650 is my favorite, and it's almost always at the uh, the 16. Oh. Very very rarely do I zoom it in. Maybe just a little if I wanted to chop something off the edge that was getting in the way. Mm -hmm. I would say 16 millimeters is about the the best focal length for me. Okay. Again, on my favourite beach, you get a lot of beach shots when you when the beach is just down the street. He's the gentleman with his uh, German Shepherd dog. Uh, it's waiting for him to kick the stone or the little ball. Uh, nobody else on the beach. Again, he's got a big coat on. It's been raining. It's, it's stopped now. Sky is very black and dark. And as it normally happens on my beach, it breaks away as the sun starts to set, and you, and you get this orange glow along the horizon. I love to be on the beach at this time of day. Usually it's a little bit uh, more reflection in the wet sand here, not so much on this picture, but very often this would be a, a really strong shadow. Um, tide is on its way out, um, so the sand is wet, so but not enough, not, not much, as much reflection as uh, there usually is. There's more reflection on this one. As you see, there's that golden band on the horizon again. As the uh, the sun is breaking through, there's dark, gloomy sky. Uh, I'm putting you off coming for England for vacations, aren't I? <laughs> this is all we've had this year is clouds like this, day after day after day. Uh, but it, it is a good time to be out there with the camera and uh, it... it Helps you get shots that you don't normally get. And I mean, I could crop this picture just about there, and uh, it would look quite interesting. But the moody moment and the whole picture is about the dark sky. 
Right. What I think really makes it is you have the nice yellow light over the horizon. So it's yeah, really great. This, is, this yeah. happens quite often, Tom, where the sun breaks through uh, the clouds. And you get the wonderful reflections. I, I think if it was completely socked in, it would be a far less interesting picture. If it was yeah. all the way to the horizon. Don't you think? Yeah, it, it, as I say, this happens regular when, when I'm out there and, uh, be, and I'm patient. <clears throat> the sky will break. And if the tide is on an outgoing tide and the sand is wet, I will get these beautiful reflections. That was very nice. Um, I think this is my 10 millimeter. Yeah, this has got to be the 10 millimeter lens, uh, Sigma 10 20. Uh, it's such a wide angle shot. Focused in on the foam. This is the end of a stormy day. Tide is on its way out. And uh, it's leaving these uh, bits of foam uh, on the beach. But look at this glow in the sky shining in the wet sand. Mm. I love the light and I'm always trying to uh, uh, to shoot the different colors in, in the light and the shadows and the uh, um, trying to get it as I see it, it doesn't always work out that way, but uh, I keep trying. Uh, this form makes a nice leading line leading you out to the uh, lighthouse way in the distance. The end of a stormy day on the, on the beach. <clears throat> um, this is a stormy day with my ND number 9 filter. Uh, to smooth out. These waves are really crashing in here and that's about as smooth as you're going to get it. I think this is about six seconds. Give me a second, I'll tell you what the exit data tells me. Yeah, this is F9 at four seconds ISO 100, 26 millimeter. And um, the stairs come down from the road, the highway is up there and we come down the stairs and this used to be an old swimming pool in the olden days, an open air swimming pool, totally disused now. And the, the waves are coming in here quite hard and hitting the wall over here on the right and then uh, the water's running off. So the number nine filter has slowed this down about as smooth as it's going to get for a stormy sea. So for that shot, you you did come down those steps and walked uh, across in front yeah, of. Yeah, came down the steps here and uh, waited to judge the moment and dashed across this this little piece to the the rocks. I'm I'm out of the water where I'm standing. I'm uh, I'm about three or four feet higher than where the waves are. Oh, wow, that's come across, come down those stairs. I'm not in any danger. I'm uh, I'm very safe where I am. I'm not standing in the stormy sea. I uh, never put myself in danger. I get wet, but I don't get, uh, no way I'm going to get washed away out to the, in that stormy sea. Ray, we're, we're just about out of time, so you want to uh, wrap up here shortly? Okay, uh, let me just pop through a few of these pictures and you see some more moody scenes on my beach. Nice. Shooting at the flowers. Uh, Trying to get the flowers inside that white circle where the sun is breaking through. Mm -hmm. Again, the sun in the distance. and uh, It's all about the sky, the dark, moody sky. Everything else just uh, adds to it. Yeah, there's a shot where you can do on stormy days. Raindrops. <laughs> shoot the raindrops on the grass. If there's nothing else to shoot, there's always raindrops on the grass. Shot in my lighthouse on a stormy sky. The, this is a shot just after dawn, and uh, the sky is starting to uh, clear up. Really wet, miserable day on the beach. A uh, gentleman walking his dog there, huddled against the rain, and he, he remarked that I must be a fool when he went past that I'm taking pictures on the beach. Nobody else out there at all. Uh, look at that stormy sky. Look at the way it's broken just here on the horizon and let the island show through. This is a little island called Koke Island. Uh, about two or three miles up the uh, coast from where I live. And the sky lifted just enough 
to get the islands and then you got one or two people just walking around the corner on the sand dunes there. Uh, it makes for a terrific shot. Look at how black that sky is. Gorgeous. Are we out of time now? Yeah, just, we are. You just are you just about done? Yeah, I'm finished. Whatever you want to finish, Tommy. Sure. Why don't you just flip through your photo photos there real quick for the rest this of is a, This is a kind of uh, more, more moody moment we get on the beach quite often. Mist. Uh, we call it a sea fret. It's where the fog comes in off the sea and uh, lasts a couple of hours and then it disappears. You usually see the people way in the distance there and uh, the emphasis on this beautiful big green rock in the centre. This was a shot I took just a few days ago. Um, really strange light in the sky. I did emphasize it then, it turned into orange, but it, it really looked like that. Uh, not quite as bad, but it was almost orange. This was a shot I took today. This was my sky um, this afternoon at about 2 o'clock. Um, beautiful. It's all about the clouds. Nothing else matters. Just the clouds. And there we are, finished. That's the first picture. Awesome. I agree. Well, okay. well, we appreciate it, Ray. So hopefully everyone uh, has uh, drawn some inspiration from that and uh, won't shy away when it's dumping rain on them now, right? <laughs> Might get some interesting uh, shots like that. So that was great. So uh, let's, let's go right into our recommended photographers. And I'll go over to Jim, and he'll share his screen. Yep, and uh, so I'll start with uh, my choice is uh, Alan Makrovich, Makrovich, and he's a pro landscape, nature, and travel photographer out of Bellingham, Washington. Um, he likes especially wilderness landscapes, uh, and you see this gorgeous shot uh, from the, of the Grand Tetons, um, and. He's got photos from especially the Pacific Northwest, but also elsewhere in the U.S. and Canada. So visit his stream. You'll see, you know, grand landscapes, uh, flowers, macros, some abstract work, and a little bit of black and white. So Alan Makrovich, take a look. And now, let's see, Tom, this is your pick. Yes, uh, for my recommended photographer, I picked Russ Bishop, who is a professional fine art landscape photographer in Southern California. He's got some wonderful scenes of the Sierras, places that I like to go. And um, here, Here's one, for example, um, showing a um, trail of, the, of uh, Bishop Pass. So I, I really, really have enjoyed his photography. And yeah, I think you have another there too, Jim. Yeah. Here's another one uh, in, in Utah. And, uh, you know, I love the colors and the layers in the rock and the uh, the bush in the foreground and the uh, contrast of the blue in the sky. So I'm surprised we haven't recommended Russ before this year, but I, I'd, I'd certainly uh, recommend following him. Yeah, beautiful. Okay, thank you. Ray, your choice. Yeah, Kelly, Kelly Perez. Um... She has a style which is very similar to mine. I love these pictures. What a gloomy, moody moment this one is. Look at the reflection of the sky uh, in the water here and the, the coloring of this picture is just out of this world. Um, not sure where Kelly lives, um, where she's shooting these at, but it uh, looks like a beautiful place. I would highly recommend you adding Kelly to your circles. Um, she has got some great shots. Uh, can we have that one back up again? Did you? The one of the lake? No, can, can anybody see that one of uh, Kelly shot with the, the, the mountains and the smooth lake? Oh, uh, you want to go to the second one? Okay, there you go. Yeah, that one, yeah. Yeah, well, I don't have any lakes where uh, where I live, um, so that's a beautiful shot. There was, uh, there was big black mountains. Um, yeah, I'd like to know where Kelly lives and where she's shooting these pictures at. Um, yeah, we, well, I think this is on the Eastern Sierras in, in California. It's in California. It's in the U.S. I didn't think she was on the northeast coast of England. Uh, I think she's in Southern California. <laughs> okay. Well, great. Good choice. Thank you. 
And Kevin? Yeah, so this is Travis Rhodes, and uh, Travis is a, a great photographer and a real nice guy on Google+. Plus. He's uh, engaging and enjoys talking with people about their photography, so, uh, you know, this is just uh, all about that uh, golden reflection in the water. Uh, long, you know, it's got some nice soft water in the uh, waterfall there, but the the winner of that shot is the uh, golden reflection there. And then you've got another one there. And this is just a real nice black and white. So you've got uh, some nice uh, textures. You've got some nice lines. Um, good subject to, to lead you into the picture. And so uh, I think you really like Travis, so follow him. Super. Thank you. Very nice. All right. All right. Thank you, Jim. Okay, so uh, once again, Ray, we really appreciate you coming on, and I think you'll uh, have inspired some people to get out and uh, not worry about the uh, bad weather so much. And, uh, you know, I wish I was retired so I could come join you on the beach every day, but I'll have to stick with my nights and weekends for now. Yeah, if you join Ray, that's going to mean sunrises, Kevin. Yeah, I can't do that, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, we'll have another show coming up uh, in two weeks, and we're going to have Jay and Marina Patel on, and so that should be a really exciting show. So uh, watch for that announcement here in the next uh, week or so, and we will see you then. Good night, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Good night from England. Thank you. Thank you.